Yo, what's going on? So today, people, we're going to uh, find out how to make a song or a beat in reason and put it in song format, rather, and export it as a, you know, a mixed down, consolidated file. What you want to do is, I'm assuming already that you guys have already made some type of uh, small sequence, maybe an 8 or 16, so however you want to do it. Um, this one, however, is in 16s. I'll go and enlarge that for you. And what you want to do is, I'm going to get rid of this. Just highlight that. Hit Control X. Is you want to go um, and highlight everything you want in the song to be repetitive. I mean, it's always good to get everything in. And the shortcut for but the copy is uh, Control C on a PC, I believe, is uh, uh, Mac C on a, uh, a Mac. I'm not too sure. Now, you can right click it and do it, but again, the shortcut's a lot easier. Once you got that, the playback bar is going to jump all the way to the end. And it's like telling me, well, what do I do next? Then you want to hit Control V and paste it. And just keep hit control and keep hitting V as much as you want to paste it. As long as you want the sequence to be. You know, um, Reason will make a default pattern, I believe. This default, uh, um, end right here. Mm, it's roughly like three minutes. It'll tell you down here if you put your playback ball. Yes. It's like roughly three minutes, two minutes and 50 seconds. But again, you can make it longer. So what you want to do now is you want to move this, this right end cursor. And move it to roughly how long you want the song to be. So, honestly, maybe right here to move this end bar as well. Because if you don't do the end bar, that's where the song ends. No matter where you had the right, this is just a loop. The end bar is what actually ends the wave. And again, let's put the snap to grid on. It makes it a little easy for us. And let's do it to the end of a region. And what we'll do is we'll take it back. Now, all you're going to be doing right now is just getting rid of stuff. That you don't need straight up so you probably want to switch to the erase tool sure cover for that on your uh, keyboard it's E you just hit E and then you play it and you see what you want in it and what you don't want in it so I'm gonna play it and I uh, was gonna listen to it right quick That's how I wanted to come in. So I have the hook, the bass, and the rhythm muted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that. Bow, bow. Now I'm gonna unmute it, and then we're gonna put it back. Alright, so again that's coming in. I don't want it that's that's everything, the the beat in its entirety and I don't wanna give the people everything I want for the artists I'm recording this for or uh, uh, producing this beat for. So what I'll probably end up doing is taking out the hook. And then I have everything um color coded with the exception of these two. I don't ask me why I just stop giving a damn. Um all of the same track. And also everything labeled, that's very important because you don't want to sit here with all these waves and stuff like that trying to figure out what is what. And it looks at the left and look at what it is. So I'm going to put the bass in. I, I might take out the, I know the rhythm makes stay. What I want to do is, I want to do a half. So take your, ra your razor tool, hit the half mark, go back, and now you got rid of half instead of the whole region. That's something new that I had put in reason 4.0. Oh, I'm gonna have that one in 3.0. Oh, there's no razor tool. Then switch back to your uh, arrow, your marquee, whatever. Hit Q, and we'll play it back again and see how this comes in a little better. Yeah, yeah, and what you would do, this is the simple type shit that you would do throughout your whole mix or your whole uh, sequence. 
the whole thing. Uh, you will sit here with your marquee, your eraser, and your eraser, and that's going to be your best friend. Some people could use the mute tool. I don't like it. If I'm not going to hear something, I'm going to get rid of it. Because nine times ten, if I don't want it, then they're just not. I'm not going to have no reason to go back and put it in. Um, now what I will do with my drums, and I have uh, I have uh, a redrum. I have a um, the new Kong that's uh, on the 4.0. I put in there, and another redrum. This is my drum rolls. I might go and add a little automation to these because I don't want them to be so repetitive. Maybe I don't want the this, the snares trying to, to come in when the beat comes in. So I'm going to solo this right quick and we're going to take a listen to it. Cool, cool. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that I want everything to be in. At that moment so what I might do is uh end up taking out this I don't want this in there I don't want the snare in there I just maybe I just want the um the the snap so let's let's hear that see how that sounds cool now nah, I'm gonna go and put everything in we'll see how it sounds in this entirety with just that taking that Awesome. So that's initially how I wanted to come in. So what we're gonna do now is I'm assuming that the automation lanes are already enabled. Make sure you have your read drum selected because otherwise, when you record automation, it's not gonna gonna work. So all you would do is hit the record button. Have everything muted out. If you have a, um, I'm using my Mackie control uh, surface to do it, but to show you guys, I'm gonna be using my mouse. Usually I use my uh, Mackie because it's it's better than a goddamn mouse. Put it that way. But if you have a keyboard that has fully automation parameters, you can assign this to anything. And what you would do is, a small lesson, is right-click whatever you want to be automated with the parameter. You would either edit automation after you write it. You can clear automation. And uh, you could uh, edit the remote override mapping. What you would do is, she is not picking up anything. And even if I touch something. It's seeing it, but it's not knowing what it is. As soon as I click this learn from control surface input, pow, Mac it, control surface. And then it's also going to show what button I hit. And that's it. So if you want to like mute shit, unmute shit, switch between anything, pitch bend, different, different, uh, was it different patterns, just anything. I mean, it's always better to have something that you can control it with just in the mouse. Because you're going to have a big right hand and a little left hand by the time you're done. But I'm going to cancel that, though. That's just a small lesson. So I got what I wanted muted out. Everything this in is going to be in there. Now I'm going to hit record. Yeah, so that's your automation. You notice that it didn't record till I touched something. And then when you stop it, things will be highlighted with a green little uh, box around it to let you know this has been automated. You can clear the automation if you like. Wow, now that's done. That automation track is gone. You can also do it from uh, here. One of the automations don't enable. 
You had to, you had to clear it. Um, what else? Let me see. Now, usually before I even go to making a song and song sequence, what am I doing right here? I EQ and compress everything that I use. Um, everything. I mean, just everything will have some type of EQ or compressor because it always makes everything sound so much sweeter. Even if a subtle compression, I use a subtle compressor on um my my drum stove for all mix. And it just makes everything that much easier. So when you go to give this uh sequence or um I don't know the mix down file to someone, there's little the engineer has to do to to spruce up the beat because if you did what you're doing reason, and they give you good uh I guess modules, you know the compressors, the EQs, the reverb, things like that are really good. Especially this peak two, the two band uh parametric EQ is real good if you know what you're looking for and you know what's supposed to be what. It's real good. There should be no reason why your mix should come out sounding muddy. If it is, it's your fault. Um, now, when you got everything you like, file, you know, sound says you done EQ, uh, automated, or everything you want. This is just the fun of making the beat. You would just go to export as audio file. You can export it as a loop. Uh, but who really wants a loop? If you want to get the whole thing, you know what I'm saying? To all the beat makers, if you want it as a loop, you know, you could do that to give a, a couple of snippets and things of that nature. But if you're going to show someone the beat, you just hit export song as audio file. But it's very important you do one thing before you do that. Hit save as. And I'm going to call it this song. Only because if I want to go back. And I get a request from a client or someone I made the beat for, and they say, "Hey, I want to do a remix, but I don't want I don't want the the hook in eighths. I want it in sixteenths, and I want the verses in thirty twos or whatever." It's gonna be a pain in the ass to go back and undo everything we just done, which wasn't a lot. And this is just the first couple of seconds of the song. Imagine a whole way through when you done really like tweaked it and mixed it. Leave you a form that's dry, just with everything that. It pretty much bland and leave this form that's already done. You can call it song and you can always go back and open up the um wow, right back to the beginning. So if if anybody needs anything, we could do the same thing all over, just following their request. Again, my EQs and all of that are still there, so that won't affect me. And that's pretty much how I roll it. And uh that's how you Make a beat and sequence it and then, you know, make it into a song format using Reason 5.0, 4.0, 3.0, just Reason. Thank you.